All right, guys, so today we got to talk about a BLM activist who has just been arrested for a failed assassination attempt on a Louisville Democratic mayor candidate, Mr. Craig Greenberg. Okay, now the BLM activist in question, his name is Quintez Brown. He was actually running for uh, Louisville uh, Metro Council. And for whatever reason, this guy snapped or something. I have no clue what is going on. Maybe I do. Actually, I got some theories. Uh, but for whatever reason, this guy decided to walk into uh, this guy's campaign office, right? Uh, the, the Democrat mayor candidate and uh, decided to try to assassinate the man, right? Try, try to shoot him. Um, and, you know, thank God his aim wasn't that good as uh, the Democratic uh, mayor candidate walked away unscathed. So we're going to talk about that today. Uh, but before we get into that, I just want to let you guys know, uh, if you like my channel if you, if, and if you like what I do and if you want to support, the way to do so is using the links in the description below. You can support the PayPal, you can support the Patreon, you can support the merch. Yes, I will be uh, adding new merch over time and, and, and upgrading my store and doing all those things. Some of you guys have been asking about that. Uh, it's all a work in progress, but I truly do appreciate those of you who have supported thus far. Uh, it really means the world to me. So without further ado, let's play this news clip of uh, this incident so that you guys get a better understanding of what's going on here. Take a look. Tonight, we have learned the name of the man arrested for shooting at a Louisville mayoral candidate. Police say 21-year-old Quintez Brown fired several shots at Craig Greenberg in his campaign office this morning. Brown is an activist and columnist running for Metro Council. WGRB's Katrina Nickel breaks down what we know. Katrina? Hayden Scott, the shooting happened here at Butchertown Market, up there on the fourth floor, which is where Greenberg's campaign headquarters are. And that's where him and his team barricaded themselves into safety. I'm blessed to be standing here today with you. Shaken. But safe. And emotional. I just want to get home to my wife and sons and give them a hug. Craig Greenberg said his team was meeting at his campaign headquarters Monday morning when a man walked into the office. When we greeted him, he pulled out a gun, aimed directly at me. And began shooting at Greenberg. Despite one bullet coming so close that it grazed my sweater and my shirt. Only leaving this hole in the back of Greenberg's sweater. Greenberg and his team of four made it out safe after shutting the door and barricading themselves in. Greenberg said the suspect ran away, but was later found and taken into LMPD's custody. LMPD is partnering with the FBI in the investigation. We are going to keep an open mind and proceed with abundance of caution um, and, and concern for many of our many of our uh, community members. Uh, Mr. Greenberg is Jewish, so there's that. We don't know if it's tied to the candidate, political, or if it's just are we dealing with someone who has mental issues or is venomous. Greenberg said it is not a day for politics, but did say it is a reminder of the work that needs to be done on gun violence in the city. And I'll do everything possible I can to make sure no one else has to experience that having a gun shot at them and then gunshots fired. Greenberg, sa Greenberg said he is encouraging everybody on his team to seek out professional help for the trauma they experienced today. Live in Butchertown, Katrina Nickel, WDRB News. Thanks, Katrina. A little more about the suspect now. 21-year-old Quintez Brown is a local activist, columnist, and candidate for Metro Council. Just last summer, Brown went missing for 11 days, but was eventually found without much explanation from police. He was active with Black Lives Matter Louisville and the University of Louisville's Youth Violence Prevention Research Center. As a columnist, the Courier Journal said he worked as an intern for the newspaper, often contributing to the opinion section. Brown is currently running as an independent candidate for Metro Council's District No. 5. Several other mayoral candidates have reacted to today's shooting. On Twitter, Democratic candidate Reverend Tim Finley tweeted, praying for the safety of Craig Greenberg and staff. I'm praying for the safety of all the candidates. This is unacceptable. Democratic candidate Shamika Parrish Wright also reacted on Twitter, saying in part, no candidate should have to deal with this. Today, we're focused on making sure everyone from all campaigns is safe. 
and Republican candidate Bill Deeriff released a statement reading in part, the shooting incident cannot be condoned. Trust that an incident such as this must not deter candidates from seeking the very best for this community. All right, guys, so you've seen that, you heard that, right? And I guess the next question is, well, why did this guy do this, right? What was the motivation for uh, him conducting this shooting? Now, interesting enough, uh, I did some research into this guy, uh, and, and I found some some interesting things. Uh, first and foremost, uh, he has been championed by Democrat politicians and media talking heads, right? Particularly, he's been championed by uh, Obama in the past and also Joy Reid, okay? In which Joy Reid actually interviewed this guy and uh, talked about the need for uh, gun reform. Take a look. Uh, this is amazing. Um, tell me why it was important. I'll start with you, Quintez. Why was it important for you to be here? Why well, is it important for me? Because first off, I'm a student and also I'm a black student. So being here with all these other students, I'm not only like showing my support, I'm also showing the nation that this is not just, you know, a white student issue. This is a black, this affects everyone. Yeah. And I definitely have to be here to, you know, show that student voices matter because that's all I'm about. Yeah, it's interesting because David Hogg, uh, one of the students from Parkland, yes, made the point, Naya, that 25% of that school of Parkland are black students and the media has missed that, you know, it's an intersectional movement even within their group. Um, you're from the home state of the Senate Majority Leader. What do you want to, what do you want him to know? Well, I want you to know that, you know, we are here and we want, we want common sense gun reform. And if you're not going to give us that, then we're going to get everyone out here to vote and we're going to vote you out of office. So if you want to keep your job, yeah. then, you know, give us what we not what we want, but what we need, what humans need. We need yeah. common sense gun reform. Get rid of assault rifles. Come on. Like, yeah. When you guys turn All right, guys. So as you can see there, um, that seems to be pretty harmless. OK, he, he's doing an interview with Joy Reid and he's talking about gun reform right that was about four or five years ago and you know i guess the question is how did he go from hey you know we need to vote politicians out to basically trying to kill politicians um and i think the way that happens guys is what i've been warning about for a long 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 time okay is that the radicalization in this country the most the people that are being the most radicalized in this country are people on the extreme left okay those people are being radicalized, and I think that this person was radicalized, okay? And one of the reasons why I think so is because he, he seems to have fell into the whole, you know, ideology behind, you know, being super pro-black, and he's one of these pan-African dudes, and that started to show up uh, in his campaign ad uh, on Twitter and some of his writings on Twitter. So let's actually take a look at, at one of his ads here. All right, so you see that, right? Okay. Uh, and then here's some of his writings. In his Twitter profile, he said, quote, we have one scientific and correct solution, pan-Africanism, the total liberation and unification of Africa under scientific socialism. <laughs> scientific socialism. <laughs> I don't know what that is. But anyways, in a separate January 10th post, Brown wrote what he called a revolutionary love letter saying, I'm writing this to remind you how great you are. During our short stay on this glorious planet, we have been collectively dehumanized and reduced to political talking points, black, white, liberal, conservative, Christian, criminal, boss, worker, activist, etc. Quote, we have been educated to use our minds narrowly and forced to identify ourselves with roles that trap us in a collective perpetual state of anxiety. He said, we have forgotten how harmonious this thing called life is and have fallen victim to a vicious cycle of pain and suffering. Many of our friends are suffering from a deep feeling of alienation. Okay, so that's some of his writings there, right? 
And in my opinion, you know, just from the information that I gathered, right? I, I think that a part of the motivations for this shooting, I think, again, is a combination of being radicalized, okay? Being told that, hey, you know, black people are under attack, that black people are living under this systemically racist system in which, you know, we're being oppressed by white people and such and such and such and police are indiscriminately killing white uh, black people in the streets. I think that's a part of it, right? I think that plays a part of it. And then I also think that this guy, because he's supposed to be for gun reform, right? And I think that, again, the language around that is where, too, has become radicalized. I mean, just the idea that you're saying march for our lives, you're basically saying that this is a life or death situation for you, that you are in a life or death situation based off what these politicians do when it comes to uh, gun control legislation, right? And, you know, when you tell young people stuff like this, right, that they're under attack because of skin color, that, you know, this legislation regarding gun control, again, it, it, it's about your life, okay, that radicalizes people, right? And I, I, I believe that this person conducted this act, right, particularly on a, on a Democrat, a, as a way to kind of show um, the need for uh, more gun control, right? Because how can you be pro gun control and then you turn around and you you take a gun and you go and try to assassinate a democrat mayor candidate right i think that's a statement of trying to show like if it's this easy for me to do this then you guys need to uh do something right that that's gonna motivate democrats to actually uh pass legislation right i mean that's my gut feeling i don't know i mean i'm simply just speculating but that seems to be kind of what it is right in my opinion if i had to pinpoint what his motivations were i think it was to try to prove a political point okay now here's the thing um this must be said because uh the the, the left and the mainstream liberal media has told us and tried to drill in our heads that the only extremist threats in this country are coming from the right particularly uh conservative white men right that conservative white men are who we need to be worried about as a country, right? Everybody else is totally fine. There's no extremism on the left. You know, Antifa, all the people, BLM, that commit all that violence, don't worry about those folks. They're not being radicalized, okay? Only people on the right that are white men are being radicalized, okay? So I, I wonder, will the mainstream liberal media pick up on this story? Will they cover this story? Will they cover the radicalization of individuals like this guy? Because he's, he's clearly been radicalized. I mean, I, I think that pan-Africanism... I don't get it, right? I don't understand the uh, obsession with black people wanting to go back to Africa. I really don't get it. I mean, I feel like as a black person, you know, despite whatever you think uh, your disadvantages may be or how bad it is in America, it is a hundred to a thousand times better than the lives any other people in Africa are living, right? For the most part, the average African person, right? So I don't understand the obsession with trying to go back to Africa. I don't get it, okay? This guy has probably never been to Africa, okay? Okay, you got a whole lot of people out here who've never been to Africa, but for whatever reason, they're obsessed with it. They're obsessed with this idea of black liberation, right? We must liberate ourselves as if they're living in slavery, and, and you're not, okay? You're living in the greatest country ever, right? And it's a damn shame that people, you know, kids, young children have been radicalized to believe anything different, that for some reason going back to Africa is going to make their lives better, Right? These people never set foot in Africa, okay? Maybe some of these people should go visit Africa, right? See, go live in, you know, uh, some of these parts of Africa, uh, like, I don't know, Sudan or something, and, and tell me how you like it, right? Tell me if you want to go live there forever, okay? But, um, yeah, um, will the mainstream liberal media cover this? Because I, I guarantee you, if this was a, a so-called white nationalist, okay, or a Trump supporter that tried to assassinate a Democrat mayor candidate, it would be front page news. You hear about it for a whole week, okay? But because it's a BLM activist, you know, who, you know, is a radical leftist, uh, you're not going to see anything about it. You're not going to hear anything about it. They're going to sweep on the road. I wonder, is Joy Reid going to talk about this? Because she obviously knows this guy. She interviewed him, right? Obama championed him. Are you going to speak out on what may have led this individual, this young man, to commit this act of violence? against the politician are they gonna speak out about it because apparently they're supposed to be so against uh violence against politicians right that that is the whole reason why joy reed goes on her show every single day and talks about uh the january 6th uh protest right because she's supposed to be against violence against politicians 
So if that's the case, right, if you're against so-called insurrections, right, and political violence, then this should be something that she's covering on her show. But I guarantee you, you won't see it. I guarantee you, you're not going to see it on CNN. You're not going to see it on MSNBC. You're not going to see it. This story would be swept under the rug. But again, if it was somebody on the opposite side of the political aisle, they were white, there was a Trump supporter or whatever, you never hear the end of it. You never hear the end of it. But again, this is another example of what I've been trying to tell people is that there is clearly a effort to radicalize young people uh, that is going on on the left. And this is what it's producing. It is producing people that think it's OK to use political violence to achieve uh, whatever type of political goals that they have. Right. And I think that this is just a prime example of such. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.